my wife was like, Marty, we got to stop making, our, letting our kids play with Travis and Michael next door because they teach them all that filthy language. I was like, honey, you're so right. But Travis and Michael have a swimming pool, so. <laughs> I went next door to talk to Travis and Michael about it. He immediately cussed me out. <laughs> Called Travis and Michael downstairs, cussed them out for cussing my kids out. Then the three of them together, like they had rehearsed it, cussed me out in unison. It was a spiritual experience, is what I'm saying. And then he told me to go back home and mind my own business. So I did. And that will be an important little detail here later in this story because... We recently had like 500 bats in our attic. I don't know if y'all get bats up in here in Charlotte, little evening bats, little bull bats. They make like a noise, like a mouse, like <laughs> Like a bat sounds like a mouse, kind of like a, like a Pentecostal mouse. <laughs> so you have, you have, okay. Huh. We call everyone. No one does bats. Nobody will do bats. Except for one guy, not even a paid ad, just in the white pages, the bug man. But we got lucky, though, because bug man knew what he was doing, and he was a certified lunatic. <laughs> he got in my house and leaned a 24-foot ladder against the back of my house, and it hit the gable vent, boom, and one little bull bat fell out of the gable vent and scurried to the wall and started to go back up the wall. He hears all the noise, and he's like, Marty, how many are up there? I was like, I don't know, Bugman, like five or six hundred. <laughs> and then Bugman picked up a brick and looked at me and looked at that bat, and then Bugman said, <laughs> Well, that's one. <laughs> you know how people brag about being licensed and bonded? Yeah, I don't think Bugman was licensed and bonded. I mean, he was bonded recently. <laughs> then he starts to pump this mixture like, psh, 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 smell like a combination of like lemon juice and Clorox and murder. <laughs> and then he saw the look on my face. He was like, Marty, this stuff is totally safe for the environment. Then he strapped on a gas mask, <laughs> threw this stuff over his shoulder and started up the ladder. Got halfway up the ladder. He was like, hey, Marty, hold the ladder. So this is me at the bottom holding the ladder. Immediately regretting holding this ladder because he squirts this acid bleach into the gable vent. Whereupon I hear this. Evidently, these bats were now upset. And they started to pour out of the side of my house like Niagara Falls, a bat coming toward my face. They are whizzing by my face, forming a tsunami of bat in my backyard. Bugman squirts into there until he hears no more noise and magically covers the hole, slides down that ladder like it's a fireman's pole into the middle of a tornado of bats and hits the ground like, boom. Oh, whew, we good? We good, Marty? We good? You said you had cash. <laughs> but man, what is going to happen to all these bats? He's like, Marty, chill out about the bats. The bats are going to be fine. They're probably going to go to that house right there. <laughs> that house with a swimming pool. Deal. <laughs> so like three months later, I'm at my mailbox. Travis and Michael's dad is at his mailbox. He's like, Marty, I got like 500 bats in my attic. Do you know anything about this? Do you even know who to call? I was like, no, nah, man, I've just been at home. Minding my own business. <laughs> He's like, no, nah, Marty, for real. Do you know anything about these bats? Do you know who to call to get rid of them? Do you know how they got here? And I was like... Nope. All right, let me get...
get out of here. I'm going to hold on. Stop, stop, stop. Stop, 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 stop. stop. Now, for real. I'll get out of here on this. You guys have been great. I'm so happy, so proud to work with. I'm going to tell you. As a comic, you do this a lot. You stand in the back of the room and you say things to yourself like, oh man, I'm jealous of that joke. Oh man, I wish I wrote that joke. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. Oh, that's funny. I watched Leanne Morgan like I bought a ticket, man. I am laughing the whole way through. She's the best and y'all are going to love her. And I'm going to get out of here on this and I'm just proud to have worked with her. So thank y'all for coming out. And um, don't clap for that. I don't have time. Um, all right, so when I worked in my school, last thing, when I worked in my school, my school was awesome because we had kids from all over the globe, kids from Korea, China, Africa. And I used to brag that I got to teach kids from Zambia. I taught two kids from Zambia named Lusungu and Tandizo Sabande. These names have not been changed to protect the innocent. <laughs> Lusungu is an African word that means mercy of God. And Tandizo is an African word that means Thomas. <laughs> Miss Sabande came to football practice late and she burst into my office. She was like, oh, Coach Simpson, I can't find my keys. Where are my keys? I can't even my car. I can't my keys. Where are my keys, Coach Simpson? Time out. I know that I don't come across as the wokest guy in this room. <laughs> I am not being insensitive and in implying that all women from the country of Zambia speak this way. That would be horrible and offensive. I'm not doing that. But I am doing a perfect impression of one woman <laughs> from Zambia who I knew for 10 years and loved dearly. And I'm not even doing an impression of her. I'm not mocking her. I'm letting you guys know what I heard in my brain. Which was, Oh, Coach Simpson, I can't find my keys. Where are my keys? I can't believe I'm a car. I my keys. Where are my keys, Coach Simpson? I'll slow it down for you. Oh, Coach Simpson, I can't find my keys. Where are my keys? I can't leave in my car until I find my keys. So I looked for this woman's keys for a half hour. And so Lusungu and Tendizo came running around the corner and she said, Oh, here are my keys! <laughs> well, that would explain why she was looking at me like I was crazy. For a half hour looking for her kids. And desk drawers. Lockers underneath bleachers. And picture me, picture me saying, you know, Miss Sabani, I saw something in your third period. Maybe the janitor got them. Surely you can just make another set. And if you let me help you with that, it'd take us like five minutes at Walmart. Cost like a dollar eighty. Miss Jackson needed my help like twice last semester. Love Miss Jackson. You know what? It is Friday. If the janitor did get him, he'd probably lock him in his office for the weekend. <laughs> Unless he took him home with him. In which case, I hate to tell you, you're probably never going to see him again. <laughs> Nobody's doing this. Child production, Joey number two. You're welcome. <laughs> 